Hello everyone, I'm Mike Moroz, I'm the president of Archway, and I'd like to welcome all of you here today for our webinar titled Next Generation Marketing Fulfillment, How Pharmaceutical Firms Benefit from a Strategic Approach. With me today is our guest speaker, Fatima Catablu. She's a senior analyst from Forrester Research and uh, was instrumental in, in uh, putting together all the, the documents that you'll see and, and uh, the research that was put together. During this webinar, Fatima will be sharing with you the state of marketing fulfillment and how leaders in the pharmaceutical industry are strategically approaching this key topic. A couple of just very quick logistics items. So during the webinar, we'll be launching three polling slides for a few very quick surveys, and we'll be able to see those results from the surveys from all the participants in real time. And we'll also be taking questions throughout using the chat feature. In addition, this webinar is being recorded, so you don't need to feel like you, you need to scramble to take notes. Tomorrow we'll be sending everyone an email with a link to the recording and the presentation, as well as a link to the Forrester Research Report with all of the backup data uh, and much more extensive data for you to download. Before I turn it over to Fatima, I'd like to share just a little bit about Archway. We are a marketing fulfillment company headquartered in Minneapolis. We have approximately 4 million square feet of fulfillment space across 13 metropolitan areas throughout North America. We take a very strategic approach, approach to fulfillment and look beyond just putting things in boxes. We're very focused on helping companies streamline their marketing fulfillment and reduce waste across the entire marketing operations supply chain. In particular, as it relates to pharmaceutical fulfillment, our solutions include fulfilling and tracking samples, products, literature, and other materials. We provide an online ordering platform for marketing and sales reps to manage campaigns and place orders. We provide print-on-demand to personalize messages, demand planning tools to reduce production overages. We have a very robust call center capability to support your sales reps calls. And we also provide secured storage that meets all the necessary industry certifications to fulfill materials. So that's a very brief little update about Archway. If you'd like more information, please check out our website at archway.com. And now I will hand it over to Fatima, and she will get into uh, the details of the presentation. Fatima? Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate it. And thank you all for being with us today. Um, during the course of the research that we did in the thought leadership paper that we put together with Archway, it became very clear to us that marketing fulfillment is, is in its infancy of maturity. And marketing fulfillment is an area that most marketers in all industries really need to reset, refocus on um, and, and place more executive visibility on in order to grow their maturity and in order to make the most of the marketing fulfillment processes in their organizations. So we're going to share a little bit with you today about what marketing fulfillment is and why it really matters. Uh, we'll take you through the state of enterprise marketing fulfillment um, and, and what people do in terms of measuring and assessing the quality of their marketing fulfillment practices. We've also built a marketing fulfillment sophistication model, and we'll walk you through that as well. And as Mike mentioned, we'll be doing a couple of polls throughout the webinar today, and we hope you'll, take, you'll participate because we think it's going to shed some interesting light um, on both the sophistication model and, and also some of the things that you'll be able to do at the end of this webinar in order to kind of grow your, your organization's marketing fulfillment sophistication. And finally, we'll provide you with just a handful of takeaways and recommendations, and Michael will come back on the line and share a great case study that our choice put together for us as well. So what is marketing fulfillment? Well, you know, we think of it in, as all of the touch points, all of the materials that consumers see at the very end of their engagement with us, right? It's from the beginning of the engagement all the way through to the end, but it's final touch point that they really experience from our brand. And when we set out to actually develop a definition of this, um, it was pretty straightforward to us. We thought of it as the production and fulfillment of not-for-sale items and their distribution to retail and non-retail locations, as well as sales out outlets in support of sales activities. So this includes everything from samples to shelving, signage to, you know, giveaways and promotions, right? There's a lot that's involved in marketing fulfillment. So to go into the, the sort of state of enterprise marketing fulfillment, we actually set out to, with a methodology. Um, as a research firm, research organization, we're pretty careful about making sure that we have good statistically valid and statistically significant um, insights. 
So we did an online survey in December of 2010. We invited nearly 250 organizations across a, multiple, uh, a multitude of verticals in North America to participate. And we asked for people to be decision makers who are responsible for managing their marketing fulfillment processes within the organization. And we asked them questions about everything from funding, how do they actually fund their marketing fulfillment processes, to the measurement and the technology that they use. And then we asked them to tell us a little bit about how they see their maturity against their peer organizations. So the industries that we spoke to, of course, include pharmaceutical firms, but we also spoke to everyone from healthcare and medical to retail and business services. Um, what we found is that typically marketers, marketing leads when it comes to marketing fulfillment. 40% uh, of the firms that we spoke with said, yeah, we, we have procurement as part of the, the buying process, um, the vendor selection process, but largely marketing is leading this. Um, in the firms that, that procurement is leading, you'll, you won't be surprised to find that we found some differing levels of maturity within those organizations. Um, we find that marketing really needs to derive some of, the, some of the processes here in order to really put marketing fulfill, fulfillment front and center within the organization. We also asked about what kinds of material uh, companies are using within their marketing fulfillment programs, and most of them are using many different kinds of materials across a myriad of sources. So documentation, of course, really important. Samples for pharmaceutical, really a big one. Um, exhibit booths and giveaway items. You see that there's a lot of material that, that people are using, right? There's a lot of touch points there. Now, pharmaceutical uses fewer, right, but much more consistent, consistently. So for you guys, it's really about documentation and sampling, some exhibit booths, and some packaging, but, but fairly limited in most of the other touch points that, that you're using. Um, and you're also using them against a fewer number of outlets. So with internal sales and field sales and, and to some extent channel partners being the primary source of sales and, and marketing, obviously putting the right material in those people's hands and making sure that those materials are used efficiently and effectively as your marketing department has, has orchestrated them to be um, or has designed them to be is really critical. Now, companies do really place a varying value on marketing fulfillment, right? So they're pointing to cost as one of the most important considerations as of, of buying marketing fulfillment and managing their marketing fulfillment processes. The quality of materials and the timeliness of materials take a little bit more of a back burner, but we were really surprised to see that only a third of companies that we spoke to actually think of optimal customer experience as a primary reason for the existence of their marketing fulfillment, right? Um, we think of that as a really important piece of this, of this pie. And when we asked those companies what optimal customer experience means to them, we got a myriad of answers. You know, the material needs to effectively communicate our ideas in a way that strikes the customer's needs. That's really important. Um, the entire organization needs to be aligned around a shared vision of a service philosophy. We love that one, right? Um, it needs to be about ease and reliability and accuracy. The experience has to be engaging, it has to be interactive, and it has to offer solutions to the customer. 100% okay? um, customer satisfaction. That, that's about as simple as it gets, about as, as straightforward as it gets. And really, for, for pharma, this is crucial, delivering the best customer experience through an informed and well-armed sales force, getting them the information that they need on time. That's really what it comes down to when you're thinking about the kinds of marketing materials that pharmaceutical firms are putting in the hands of their field sales agents. Now, there are challenges to this, right? I mean, if everybody was doing it really well, we wouldn't have to do a thought leadership paper and hold a series of webinars about it. But what are those challenges? Well, vendors. Um, vendor compliance, meeting SLAs and quality control, that's one of the key challenges that our that clients pointed to. And then the difficulty in getting vendors to react to last minute changes, right? Being nimble is, is another key challenge. But the truth is, people are still using 
a lot of vendors to outsource their fulfillment practices. So 45%, of, nearly 45% of the folks we spoke with are using between one and five outsourcing uh, firms, and over or nearly a third are using between six and 15. So that's a lot of vendors that folks are using that they need to manage, even though those vendors are some of the biggest challenges that they face. So what kinds of vendors are they using? Um, well, over two-thirds are using a printer. Um, a third are, or two-thirds are using shippers, so FedEx, UPS. Um, fewer than half are actually using their ad agencies, and, and a third are using fulfillment specialists. So we're going to pause here for 30 or 45 seconds and ask you, which vendors does your firm use for marketing fulfillment? And you'll see in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you should have a poll there. And we'll just hang tight for a few seconds here. Okay, great. So um, let's see here. So nearly a third of you, actually just over a third of you, told us that um, you're using your printers. About 15% using a shipping, 15% using agencies, 20% of you are using fulfillment, a fulfillment specialist. So that's a really interesting um, number when you compare it to how this breaks out across the, the, broader, um, the, the broader category of clients that we spoke with. So some of the other challenges that folks told us that they're facing are budgets, right? Um, there's not enough budget to support the marketing consumables, right, and, and marketing fulfillment in general. And the timeliness and the delivery of, of getting the materials in folks' hands is also a challenge. So about 17% of folks told us that, that, they're, that they have that problem. The other big issue, and I think with any marketing, any cross-channel, cross-line of business marketing function, and um, this is very true, it's a cultural challenge. Um, there are delays in getting approvals from internal stakeholders because people just aren't really paying attention, right? Um, slow approval rates so that vendors can actually meet those deadlines that are being set. And then executives aren't really offering support. So if you're not getting executive level support and there's not executive visibility into the business impact of something like marketing fulfillment, obviously the internal stakeholders are, are equally uninclined to make marketing fulfillment a priority for their business. So what do you do about that? I mean, these are some pretty big challenges that you're facing from an organizational perspective. Well, one of the big issues is how do you actually prove the value of marketing fulfillment? And that really comes down to measuring and assessment. So we asked clients how they're evaluating their marketing fulfillment programs. Um, and it turns out that measuring timeliness is pretty achievable. Um, it's not so difficult to, to find timely, to measure timeliness. But accuracy and quality are really a challenge. So 60% of firms said, yeah, you know what, we can, we can figure out that orders are being delivered in the right time frame. When we, when we expect them to, to show up. But the order accuracy and the delivery accuracy, those are a real challenge. Inventory accuracy, is the material actually, are the quantities of the materials actually there um, and, and being received accurately? Um, is, the, is the inventory maintaining for the period of time that we expect it to be, right? Over a third of companies are telling us that they've got challenges there. And then the order quality audit, you know, that's a big challenge because who do you, who do you have do that work, right? Um, it's a real problem when you're delivering materials to field sales who are moving a mile a minute. Um, they're not the ones who are coming back to you and telling you that there's problems with the quality of material that, you're, that they're receiving, right? Now, the frequency by which people are actually running these audits is is also a challenge. Um, and you'll see that it depends based on the metric that we're looking at. So nearly 50% of people are measuring the quality of materials frequently, four or more times a year. 
But the efficiency of the process, only about a third of folks are thinking of it on a quarterly basis, right? That's a problem because you really need to make sure that your processes are accurate and efficient if you want that material to show up on time and with the quality that you expect. The other challenge is that companies are relying on their vendors to measure the quality of their marketing fulfillment processes. So it's about SLAs, right? And that's, that's hardly enough. When you're spreading your business and you're spreading your marketing fulfillment across the myriad of, of vendors that we just talked about, printers, shippers, agencies, and fulfillment houses, how do you actually make sure that, that they're all in concert with one another. How do you make sure that the SLAs actually agree and that people are held accountable across every touch point, across every point of the process? That's a real problem to get to because SLAs just aren't a substitute for internal analytics. So we took all of this information and, and, you know, we asked people how sophisticated they thought that they were and we decided that it was really time to build a model um, and really understand what the sophistication model looks like. So when we asked companies to actually self-report, um, you know, 50% of them said, look, we think we're pretty equal to our peers. Uh, we think we're doing as well as anyone. Um, Nearly a third said, yeah, oh, we're more effective. Yeah, we definitely, we're up there. We do a really good job. 6% um, thought that they were a lot more effective. And only about 10% thought that they were less effective than their peers. So then we said, okay, well, let's take a look at the survey responses themselves and build a set of variables around them and categorize the companies that we've interviewed and we've surveyed based on their relative maturity. So let's build this model out. And we sort of defined it at, in three different buckets. We said, okay, the folks who are leaders really treat marketing fulfillment as a strategic function within their organization. They support it with investment. They invest both in technology and they invest in partnerships. And they have a seat at the executive table. There's somebody kind of evangelizing marketing fulfillment. There's somebody saying, this is a critical piece of our marketing program. The folks who we've considered latent are making some strides. They're putting some money into the process. Um, maybe they've partnered with a firm or two that really understands marketing fulfillment. Um, but they're not quite there in terms of sophistication. They don't quite think about um, marketing fulfillment as a key piece of their marketing practice. And then the latter are those folks who just think of it as business as usual. Um, it's an operational thing that has to get done. Um, it's not at all a part of a customer-centric marketing strategy. In fact, it's not really about marketing strategy at all. It's, as I said, operations. So we want to pause here again just for a minute and ask you whether you would consider your organization a leader, a latent, or a laggard. Okay, great. So, um, before we do the big reveal, 25% um, of you told us that you think that you're a, a leader, 35% um, of you consider yourself latent, and 10% of you consider yourself laggard. That leaves about 30% of you who said that you're unsure. So, what did we find when we actually did the research and, and started mapping people into these buckets? A mere 14% of the folks who responded to the survey were actually leaders in marketing fulfillment. 35% were latent. And over half are laggards. Over half of the companies that we spoke with don't see marketing fulfillment as a key piece of their, of their marketing strategy. Right? So how does it break down in terms of the verticals that we spoke with? Well, Pharmaceutical is, is pretty interesting here because you guys make up the bulk. The majority of you are, are squarely in the latent category, right? 50% of the pharmaceutical firms that we, that we interviewed are latent. 40% of you are laggards. 
and leaving 13% of you as, as um, leaders. But what's interesting is that as it goes, you guys are actually in pretty good shape, right? There's a lot of room for growth. There's a lot of room for evolution. But those of you, but as an industry, there's enough people thinking about marketing fulfillment. And I suspect that that's largely because of the limited number of outlets that you have available to you. So the marketing fulfillment material just has to be solid and it has to be there in time, okay? Um, what differentiates leaders from laggards? Well, leaders know the importance of, of fulfillment. And again, um, these are the people who say, yeah, it's going to be increasingly important to my marketing organization as, mar as the marketing ecosystem continues to fragment, right? Um, how many of them actually feel like their marketing fulfillment practice needs an overhaul? Well, even these leaders, 24% of them are saying, yeah, I agree. I, I think our marketing fulfillment does need an overhaul. Interestingly, of the laggards, it's a very small number, right? And we were really surprised to see that only 2% really agreed with the fact that their marketing fulfillment needs an overhaul. Pretty surprising. Cultural support is a big differentiator between these tiers as well. So when we ask them whether they think about fulfillment as part of their planning, their marketing planning and strategy, um, leaders bring this to the table really early. 90% of them say that it's part of their planning process early in the marketing planning process. Um, fewer than half of the laggards do this. They also feel like they're optimized, they're, they're organized for optimizing their marketing fulfillment practices. Now that means that within the organization, um, there's, there's some kind of centralization. They understand that marketing fulfillment has to touch all parts of the marketing planning and strategy process. Um, they understand that somebody within the organization has to be accountable for marketing fulfillment, right? They also take a pretty consistent approach across the lines of business. So they're leveraging lines of business and channels um, to improve the consistency of their marketing fulfillment programs, to improve the efficiency of their marketing fulfillment programs. And this is just sort of logical, right? When you think about how how much more efficient you can become when you can when you standardize anything across your lines of business purchasing, um, printing, all of it, it's very clear that when you can do that, when you actually take a consistent approach, you, you have more efficiencies across the board, right? They also have more senior leaders, right? They have senior leaders who believe in the strategic value of marketing fulfillment. Um, nearly a third of the laggards have this. And this is a really big differentiator because it puts people Again, in the boardroom, it gives marketing fulfillment visibility at a very high level of the organization. And then finally, they have the right team of people. Now, that could be internal and external, but in this case, we're saying, who are the people who manage the investments? Who are the people who actually manage the data and the processes of marketing fulfillment? And over 95% of the leaders have somebody in place, have people who are focused on making sure that marketing fulfillment has the, the visibility and has the appropriate processes in place within the organization. So back to the earlier section of the presentation where we were talking about measurement and analytics, um, this does become a key differentiator between the leaders and laggards as well. So we want to ask you just briefly now, are you able to manage the impact of your samples and literature to the last mile? And by last mile here, we mean the point at which the materials are making it from your field sales, field sales folks into the final consumer's hands. Are you able to manage that impact? Okay, so 45% of you told us that you are able to measure um, to the last mile. And 15% of you told us that you're not able to. And 40% of you kept awfully quiet on the matter. So curious to know what that's about. Um, but you'll see here that the folks who are leaders, I mean, almost unfailingly, they measure regularly and they measure consistently the impact of fulfillment on their marketing campaigns. It is it is crucial to the success of their programs. And frankly, it's crucial to building out a business case for making marketing fulfillment a, a key piece of, of the marketing effort, right? 
Um, they actually have dedicated analytics resources. So this means that they, they understand exactly what's happening within their marketing fulfillment processes. It means that they're testing. It means that they're learning from the marketing fulfillment that they have in place today. And they're always working towards optimizing what they're doing. They also centralize the analytics function, which is really interesting. So um, within this area of, of marketing that we think of as customer intelligence and customer insight, um, centralizing analytics is really important. And we think that marketing fulfillment sits squarely in the middle of this. Having a centralized function means that the information is making it out to the organization, both from both to marketing and to operations. Everybody from logistics to creative understands the impact of marketing fulfillment on the business and their role within the marketing fulfillment process, right? Um, and then we're also seeing that the predictive aspect of centralizing analytics. You actually get a sense of how how your marketing functions are impacting your future business and what you need to do in order to improve those marketing functions and marketing fulfillment processes. Um, you know, to the poll, the majority do monitor down to the last, last mile, although you'll see that here even the leaders have challenges, right? 80% of folks are telling us, yeah, we have this kind of visibility and we can assess the last mile of, of our marketing fulfillment functions. Fewer than a quarter of the laggards are able to do this. And then when we asked about visibility, um, nearly 90% of the people that we consider laggards really have visibility into how the consumables are actually used in the field. And this is important because it's a question of, you know, you put a lot of money into producing these materials. Making sure that they're actually used and understanding how they're used is very, very important. So the third tier of what sets the, leader, the leaders apart from the laggards is the use of appropriate technology. So when we ask them um, whether they feel like they have the right technology, whether in-house or outsourced again, to optimize their marketing fulfillment practices, we got you know, some 82% of, of the leaders saying, yeah, we feel pretty strongly. We, we, we definitely feel like we have the right technologies in place. Again, nearly a third of laggards, or, or over two-thirds of laggards, don't feel that they have the right technology to manage and monitor uh, their marketing fulfillment. Um, as to whether they have an actual technology strategy, this is where the leaders excel again. They're telling us, look, we understand how important this is. And whether we have the right technology today, we have a roadmap in place. We have a framework in place for actually ensuring that we have the right technology in the future. We have a strategy for using the right technology in the future. And again, no surprise here that, that the leaders really use technology to optimize their marketing fulfillment processes as well. Okay. And finally, from a partnership perspective, the leaders, they're out there choosing the right marketing fulfillment partners. And that can be anything from a company like Archway to your printer, but making sure that the people that you're using, making sure that the partners that you're using understand the goals of your marketing fulfillment, understand, making sure that they understand your business and your vertical, your industry, and how important marketing fulfillment is to those industries, really important stuff. So, what are, the, what are the key takeaways here, um, and, and what do we recommend for organizations to do in order to kind of become more mature within their, their marketing fulfillment? Well, I think one of the most interesting things is most firms tend to rate themselves higher on the maturity scale. Um, interestingly, you guys were, were pretty honest, I think, about where you put yourselves, you know, given that 35% of you said that you were latent. Um, but 25% of you said you, you felt like you were leaders in, in marketing fulfillment. And I think we would challenge you to go back and reassess that based on what we've shared with you today. Um, we also think that marketing fulfillment absolutely has to be part of the overall marketing program. And it has to be early at the table, at the planning table. Um, it can't be an afterthought. It can't be something that um, is an operational mandate that, that follows all of the strategic planning of marketing. 
you have to measure. You have to have the right processes in place, the right technologies in place to measuring marketing fulfillment. Again, this is expensive stuff. You're spending a lot of money to produce the materials and to get those materials into the field. Um, I think it's important, it's critically important to measure that you're, to measure the, both the output of that and to measure that those things are happening in the way that you're planning for them to happen. Okay. And finally, again, the right combination of service providers and technology, that's really the thing that helps advance marketing fulfillment maturity. We find that the companies um, who, are, who are partnering with the, work, with the right people who understand, again, the, the industry that they're working with are amongst the most mature. And we would say, too, it's not on the slide, but we would say that by and large, the companies who told us that uh, marketing fulfillment is a key part of their customer-centric stra strategy, you won't be surprised to hear that those were some of the key leaders in the industry. So what do we think you guys should do? Well, again, evaluate your current marketing fulfillment maturity. Um, we put together a self-assessment as part of the um, white paper that we did, and you'll be getting that in email tomorrow from the folks at Archway. We encourage you to go in and take that self-test. And, and see where you sit on that continuum. Um, think about the organization's readiness to evolve on the maturity scale. Again, you know, pharmaceutical firms do tend to be centralized across geographies, but one of the areas that we think you really could centralize better is across functions. So thinking about your printing and shipping and the consumables that you're actually producing, think about how you can start to centralize those processes to become more efficient and more mature. You have to shift the cultural impressions of marketing fulfillment. Um, there has to be more visibility at the highest levels of the organization. And one of the things that we thought was really interesting is that, frankly, within pharmaceutical, um, which is the second from the bottom there, there's the least amount of visibility within the C-suite. Now, imagine how much further those, those latent, those 50% of pharmaceutical firms that we evaluated as latent, how much farther you could get if only you had visibility at the VP level or above, right? Big opportunity there. Um, and then set a roadmap and a timeline. We think about pilots as a really great opportunity here. Think about one channel, one line of business. They're a great starting point for helping to achieve greater maturity and more sophistication. Start small and build on your progress and build out the business cases that make sense for your organization and your business. And then finally, identify the right partners to help you improve measurement, to help you improve your self-assessments, right? Um, to help you deliver more insights within the organization. And these are the firms that are, that are going to, again, help you elevate marketing fulfillment within your organization to a different level. And then again, the people who have the insight, the industry insights, to help you understand what ongoing program improvements you can make within your business. And with that, I'm going to turn things back over to Mike um, to talk a little bit about the Archway Assessment Tool and the case study that they've put together for us today. Mike? Thanks, Fatima. That was very, very insightful. Great presentation. I think there was some very concrete and actionable recommendations for everyone to consider. So uh, Fatima has shared insights on how to improve the marketing fulfillment process, and, and we know based on all the information provided here today and just you know, thinking about our businesses that evolving on that maturity scale can really be challenging. So beyond the recommendations that, that Forrester has provided, um, you know, Archway also offers an in-depth, no-cost, no-obligation assessment process that really maps out what you're doing today, helps pinpoint areas of improvement. We've helped clients literally take millions of dollars out of their fulfillment process. And one very brief example that I'll give you a case study uh, to share is with a pharmaceutical client that needed help fulfilling materials to support 50 plus brands and, and approximately 8,000 sales reps. So after we reviewed their materials and processes, we built a solution that really included creating a web-based ordering platform that completely integrates not only with the company's users, but also their ERP systems. The platform is really based on allowing the company to set different levels of access and control for the sales reps. Users can browse, manage, and order inventory in real time, which is, which is very, very critical. Designate products as favorites, manage mailing lists, and receive customized reporting. And we also designed a dedicated warehouse space for them to meet the stringent security and safety guidelines that uh, that, that company, uh, particular client, required. 
that client was and, and continues to be very, very satisfied with the results. And, uh, you know, in summary, we are able to provide them a much, much quicker order processing time, reducing the cycle from four days to 24 hours, improving the user experience, which resulted in much fewer help desk and customer service calls, really driving down their cost in that area, improving visibility so they can better understand inventory levels, waste, obsolescence, those types of things, which again drove down costs. And overall, uh, it was fantastically received, and, and there's been about an $8 million cost savings um, through driving out waste across that entire supply chain. So that's just that's one example of, of the types of services that we can provide, and that assessment process really helps us pinpoint where those opportunities are. So at this time, if there's any questions, we'll open it up uh, via the, the chat feature, and I'll pause here for about 15 seconds or so if anybody wants to, to type in questions, and then uh, we'll come back, and if there are questions, we'll answer those. Okay, we've got a couple of questions that have come in. So the first one, as I, as I look at this one, I'll read it, but I think Fatima, this is probably best answered by you. The question, question is, what should companies be measuring when analyzing the effectiveness of their marketing fulfillment programs? That's a great question. Um, so, you know, I think it, it's probably like four or five things. Um, first of all, I, I think timeliness is critical. Again, you know, we, we think about that end point of the customer experience, and when there's an inconsistency between the marketing messaging that's out in the field and the material that's actually making it into the consumer's hands, that's a real problem. And I think that's, that's really a question of timeliness and sort of the accuracy of, of the delivery, right? So that would be one major thing to measure. Um, the quality of materials, too, really important. I mean, I, I keep going back to this idea of customer centricity and the final touch point. And I've certainly been in the position of getting materials, whether from my doctor or, you know, within other industries not specific to pharmaceutical, um, getting material that is just in really poor condition. It, it doesn't behoove my experience with and my experience of that brand, of that business. So I think the quality of materials is, is Crucial. Maybe most important, though, I think, is the actual use of the material. So ensuring that field sales are using what is being sent to them, ensuring that they uh, understand the importance and the value to their business of using the materials that you've put together, um, and really ensuring that um, they're communicating back to you what they need and how they're using those materials. It's a tough thing to measure for sure, but I think I think it's, it's absolutely critical. Um, and you know, probably the efficiency of the process. I think both from the internal perspective and then once it leaves the warehouse, ensuring that the the production of the marketing fulfillment materials is efficient, um, ensuring that you know, getting things into the field is efficient and cost effective. All of those things I think are, are pretty important. So the, the overall process. Um, so yeah, timeliness, the quality of the material, um, the actual use of the materials, and then the overall process efficiency I think are the key things to measure. Great, perfect, thank you. So the next question is, what is the average timeline for reaching full maturity? I guess maybe I can take that one. And like many questions, the answer is, right, it, it depends. And, you know, we've seen, and it really depends on the current state, on, on where a particular company is at along that continuum. But what we've seen is it can take anywhere from, you know, 9 to up to 12 months. Um, and there are a lot of different elements that really drive that, that process. So analyzing the current process is key. Uh, really then, based on that, figuring out what the process improvements need to be and getting those implemented and all, as well as best practices. Deploying different technology tools and new technology, more robust technology tools is critical to allow that visibility across the supply chain and also helps increase the timeliness. And then, you know, tweaking and further analyzing until, you know, the, the, uh, that full maturity state to become a leader is, is optimized. But we've seen it, you know, again, it depends, but it takes anywhere from 9 to 12 months to be able to 
effectively change the, you know, the level of engagement. And it looks like we've got one more question that came in. And that, as, as I look at this one here quickly, I think this is probably a question better suited for Fatima as well, uh, because it directly relates to the key content within the presentation. So the question is, if my company is a latent, does it matter if we get to a leader position? Yeah, that's a great question, and, and one that I think comes up any time we build a maturity model um, is good enough, good enough. And I would say it's, it's critical. I think, you know, again, there's so much marketing fragmentation happening um, right now. I think that um, as marketers, we are tasked with making sure that the right materials are in the right place at the right time to make it to the right consumer, the right end user. And as a latent, you can't do that. Um, you just don't have the visibility into the overall fulfillment cycle. You don't have visibility into what you're measuring. And you can't be strategic and analytical about your use of the materials and the production of the materials if you don't have that visibility. And if you don't sort of take a very strategic view of marketing fulfillment. And Again, you know, it go back to the customer centric issue and the customer centricity message. Those those interactions with consumers are so important, and making sure that the material is relevant, making sure that the material is timely. You have to be a leader in order to get to that point to make sure that everything is relevant and timely and and in the right place. Um, so, absolutely, I think it's critical. Good enough isn't really good enough as marketing continues to fragment, as consumer loyalty continues to fragment. And especially within pharma where you're so dependent on field sales and a few channel partners, you have to make sure that you have that visibility. You have to make sure that you have that very strategic view into the fulfillment cycle. Um, so yeah, I think absolutely it's critical. Excellent, thanks. Well, we don't have any other questions that have come in, so with that, I will thank everyone for, for joining in on the webinar today. Hopefully you found it very beneficial. And Please look tomorrow in your email box for links to both this presentation as well as the Forrester, the complete Forrester research report. And uh, with that, I will again thank everybody and wish you all the best of the rest of your day. Thank you.